pace. This is going to be one of those game-changing episodes. Like, what? How does that happen? Why aren't more people flocking into this? Wow. If you're listening, folks, you can make some dough. Yo, everybody, welcome to Get Creative. Thank you so much. I am a couple of minutes late because I just left Wholesale Hotline, jetted all the way over here. Just give away a car to Larry Parsons. That was really, really fun to be able to do that in person. Um, fun, really fun to do. Tonight, guys, we're going to be giving away a couple of iPhones. I just want to give and give and give and give. In fact, somebody came to the Wholesale Hotline podcast studio tonight and said, Pace, where's my iPhone? I go, I'm giving it away on Get Creative tonight, on, not on Wholesale Hotline. So, Tonight, we're going to be talking about leads and where leads come from. Good to see you guys. Thank you so much. Please let everybody know that we are live over here on the YouTube channel. Tonight, we're going to be talking about, again, leads. Where do leads come from? There are three primary uh, buckets that leads come from. And we'll jump into all of the ways that you can get a deal. Um, ooh, got any droids? No, I will not be giving away any droids, Rob Hasty. Ever, ever, ever. I will not ever do that. Uh, good to see you guys. Where are my Cleveland people at? You know, that was a lot of fun. We went out to Ohio this year to see you guys. Had a blast out there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, if you guys have questions tonight, happy to answer those questions for you. Super happy to do it. Now, next week, we will have a guest, one of my sub two students. I'm giving a one-on-one -on -one to, and we're going to be breaking down their business and dissecting their business. That will be happening next week. The conversation about pace, I'm limited on time. I don't know what to do with all this limited time. And I, you know, I always have this thing where I say, if I spent a week with you, okay, if I spent a week with you and I could find 20 hours of inefficiency, wasted time, or just flat out extra time you could fill in with something efficient, you would have to give, give me $10,000. If I couldn't find 20 hours, I would give you $10,000. Who would take that bet? And I have yet to have somebody take me up on that bet. I would love, love, love to one day say, uh, do that. Pace, when are you coming to the Florida Panhandle? Last year in 2023, I visited 110 cities. I visited over 7,000 of our community members in person, met them, hung out with them, took photos, did all the things. And Florida Panhandle, where uh, Pensacola is, I have a big, 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 ooh, Arij, I love this. He says, would you repeat the bet? Yes, I will repeat the bet. Um, Florida Panhandle, I have a 20-door property in Pensacola that is currently under renovation. When that's done, I'll probably make my way out there, but that'll take a little bit of time. Just FYI, it'll take a little bit of time for me to get out there. So guys, remember every Monday night, 7 p.m., I will be doing this podcast. I used to do this on Sunday night, but then I just kind of felt bad. I felt bad that I was robbing from you guys. And so tonight we will be talking about lead generation, lead generation. Terrence Lutz says, stay home, man. Quality family time. Yeah. Um, yes and no. You know, I don't like being home. To be honest, I like being with my family, but I don't like being home. I'm an adventure seeking dude. I want to be out and about. I want to be on a plane. I want to be seeing my properties. I want to be visiting my people. So as my kids get a little bit older, it becomes a little bit easier to bring them with me. I had them travel with me 70% of the time last year. So family time doesn't necessarily mean home time for me, which is great. Okay. Um, Dustin says, I'm doing tons of flips in Akron and Cleveland, looking for more deals here. I am a buyer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, R. Jones says, I want to be in Pensacola. I don't know that that's a thing that people actually say, but I get it. You know, maybe you've never been to Arizona. If you go to Arizona, maybe you should uh, say I should be in Arizona because it's the greatest place to ever live. Arij Al-Khalidi. Says, Pace, will you repeat the bet? Yes, I will repeat the bet. I've never had somebody take me up on this bet. Here's what it is. You and I sign an agreement. I come spend a week with you. And if I can't find inefficiencies and ways for you to build your business, then I pay you $10,000. If you see me provide inefficiencies and tell you where you should be time blocking and moving things around to allow yourself to get, I don't know, 15 to 25 extra hours a week. 
you owe me $10,000. And I've had nobody take me up on that bet because everybody says, yeah, he's right. Like in one day, I would, I would find six hours of inefficiency. And why do I bring this up? I bring it up because so many people say, I don't have time. I don't have the ability to do any of these things, but I want to get out of the rat race. I want to become wealthy. I want to become rich. Guys, this last month, I have one asset, my uh, RV park in Montana. That RV park generated $42,000 in revenue. My cost to operate it is $22,000 in cost. That's including my payments, my taxes, my insurance, my overhead, my payroll, all of those things. I made 20 grand on one property that I bought three months ago, $20,000 on one property. That $20,000 will produce for the rest of my life. So how do you do these deals? How do you get leads for these types of things? How do you get involved in these types of deals? That is what the goal is. And so next year or next week, we will be talking with one of my sub two community members talking about his inefficiencies in his time. And he says, I'm a dog, I'm a nurse and I work really long days at the hospital. I'm like, okay, you're one of these people that does three twelves or four tens and you think you're busy. You are not busy. An entrepreneur is actually busy. Somebody has multiple businesses running. You are actually busy and you have phone calls that are interrupting this and you're in this meeting and this happens and then that happens and this employee, the, 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 it's like nonstop. Today, um, you know, one of these days today are three or four phone calls that really needed to happen, but I couldn't even get to them because I just had things taking away from me. And I'm really, really good about my time and my time blocking. So we'll be talking about that next week on next week's episode. I'll actually be bringing somebody in that is a nurse, a full-time nurse. Bill, I imagine they'll be working four tens or three twelves and they think they're busy. They're not busy. Okay. They are not busy. I will show them exactly where they should be spending their time and what they should be spending their time on. So um, Merley says, what is your number one? I will get to that in a little bit. Pace, do you ever come into Flagstaff? I used to go up to Flagstaff a lot more often than I do now, but uh, I just bought a property in Montana, seller finance, $1 down payment on this property. And so I spend a lot more time up in Montana where there's actually water. Flagstaff pretends to have water, no lakes, no rivers, no streams, none of that kind of stuff. So there's nowhere really to have water sports and fishing and all of that kind of stuff. Flagstaff is like a fake outdoorsman paradise. It's not real. It's like, where's the lake? Where's the rivers? Where's the actual outdoors? It doesn't exist up there. And so, sorry, not going to happen. I don't want to hang out in Flagstaff anymore. It's basically one mountain with some really good food, to be honest, downtown. Um, but I'm not going to spend time up in Flagstaff that much any longer. All right. So Pace, how do you purchase an RV park or mobile home park? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about lead generation. Where do we get these things from? Now let's ask a couple of questions tonight. How many people in here are ready to acquire a piece of real estate? How many people in here are actually ready to acquire a piece of real estate? So let's go through a deal that I'm actually working on right now. We'll talk about where the lead came from and we'll talk about, are you ready to buy and acquire a piece of real estate? Because if you are, and you actually understand this stuff, you go, okay, a lot of people are saying me. A lot of people are saying me, Tamisha, Love it, King King. I don't know if that's your real name. That sounds dope. Um, John Nakarado. Um, what's up, Chris? John Baptiste. Good to see you, brother. Kathy Jones says me. Alex says me. A lot of people are saying me. Now, you guys need to understand that 50% of real estate investors this year that acquired their first piece of real estate will put their piece, that piece of real estate back on the market and get rid of it in less than 12 months. Owning real estate is actually very, very challenging. I'm going to go through and tell you exactly what the heck I'm talking about here in just a second. We'll switch over to the big whiteboard. Oh, you know what? Maybe we should maybe we should just keep it simple tonight. We'll keep it on the small whiteboard and see if you guys like that tonight instead. Okay. Um, awesome. We talked about lead generation there. Now, here's I've got a deal right now in Mesa, Arizona. And this deal in Mesa, Arizona is a three bed, one bath with a one bed, one bath guest house. So basically it's just one property with a three bed, one bath and a one bed, one bath kind of split. I guess you would call it a duplex, right? Or some people call it a, a 
uh, two family. Some people on the East coast, they like to call these things, two family, three family, four family properties. We just call them duplexes in Arizona. Okay. So, Ooh, let me remove Chris's comment so we can actually see what the heck I'm talking about. So we've got this property sellers, married couple. They bought this property basically two years ago. And here's what they thought. They thought, you know what? We want to be real estate investors. And these real estate investors buy this property. They put a tenant in this three bed, one bath. That tenant is paying $1,600 a month. And they never put somebody in here. And I don't know exactly why they don't have somebody in this unit. I think we've got it under contract today, but I think it's because they haven't finished this part of the property because I'm going to guess that as this $1,600 comes into this family, they are using the money instead of reinvesting, okay? And a lot of people that buy real estate, they think I'm going to take this money and I'm going to have cash flow and I'm going to retire. And while I do see that happen from time to time, most of the time for the first couple of years of acquiring real estate, you really have to stabilize and get really good tenants and before you get there, you are going to have some bad tenants, okay? Uh, Cyber Columbiana um, pays thoughts on how to generate leads to be successful as an agent, wholesaler, et cetera, without a social media presence due to corporate job conflicts, asking for a friend. No problem. I will get there. I promise you tonight. Um, in fact, I'll make that my, my main question I will answer here in a minute. But what I want to talk about for the first couple of minutes is what are you going to do if you have a lead? right? Are you going to wholesale it? Are you going to fix and flip it? Are you going to buy and hold it? You need to understand that. You need to understand your exit strategy. If you're not trying to build a whole entire wholesale business, which a lot of people are just simply not, um, then you don't need to generate a lot of leads to do a lot of deals. You really don't. If you're trying to be a wholesaler and that's your full-time income and you want to go build an entire business of being a wholesaler, then you got a big lead problem. If you're somebody that's like, I just want to buy two or three rentals a year with as little amount of money as possible, with no credit, um, good interest rates, then join the Sub2 community and buy a deal from a Sub2 student. I bought $100 million in real estate from Sub2 students last year myself in 2023. $100 million in real estate purchased through my students alone last year. Okay, so if you're looking for deals, you can just buy deals from other students that are actually wholesaling those deals. You don't have to generate leads. So that th the reason I'm asking this question is because if you're trying to just buy and hold, then what do you need to generate a lot of leads for, right? Door knock, cold call. You don't need to do that. In fact, somebody else is doing that. So why do that? All right, so we'll get to that in a little bit, a little bit more in depth. Now, the, the sellers say, all right, this is great. We're making money cash flowing on this property. But guess what? Their tenant about three months ago, here's the tenant. Let's call this tenant Tom. Tom decides, decides to stop paying. They, he's not paying right now. One month, one month of that $1,600 not coming in to the landlords. These landlords are stressed out. It's their only property. It's a side hustle. And the second that they don't have that $1,600 coming in, this is what they do. What do you think they do? Do you think they paid the mortgage even though the tenant was not? They also stopped paying the mortgage. Guys, these are real estate investors. These aren't homeowners. These are real estate investors that bought this property to invest in real estate. And the second that tenant stopped making the payment, which will happen in buy and hold real estate, and your property manager is not going to do a good job. There's going to, there will be problems, right? Now, over time, you're going to make so much more money. It's an investment. It's a basically a guaranteed way for you to make money long term. But if you're one of those people that you're in a situation where one tenant doesn't make the payment on one house for a couple of months, do you have the financial fortitude to fight through that? Let me tell you how bad it actually gets. It's not one month, two months of payments that actually they're worried about. Here's what's really going on in this property. They, the tenants stopped paying. So what happened is the sellers right here, they decide we're just going to let the house go. And they stopped making the payments. Okay. They stopped making the payments themselves. 
they go, all right, we're just going to go let this go into foreclosure. So they go into foreclosure, these sellers. One of my students actually communicates with them off the foreclosure list and says, hey, don't let this house go to foreclosure. Let us buy this property from you. So we want to buy this. Now, the student actually was interested in buying this. He actually has whole, wholesaled a couple of deals to me in the last couple of months. And so he has been wholesaling. He's made, I think he's made about $30,000 in the last couple of months just wholesaling a handful of deals, okay? So he's looking at this and saying, I have $30,000 that I've been saving because he has a pretty good W-2 job as well. He looks at that $30,000 and goes, I want to reinvest this. I can get this deal done. Why? Well, because this is the deal he works out. He works out a deal with the seller, $380,000 purchase price. Out of that $380,000, 280 of that is a sub two mortgage. So he's going to take over that sub two deal. The other $100,000 is equity the seller has. So my student calls me up and goes, can you help me structure this? I go, no problem. Let's tell the seller we'll give them $10,000 down payment towards their equity. So they only have to finance 90 instead of the full 100. But here's the thing. You're not just going to give them 10,000. You're also going to have $3,500 in late payments that haven't been paid. You're also going to have closing costs of like 5,500 bucks. And you'll have maybe some other miscellaneous expenses of like, like $1,000. So really, if you're going to buy that deal, you're going to be all in 10, 18, 19. You're going to be in $20,000. So I said, hey, student, do you want to risk that $30,000 to put $20,000 into that deal to get the deal done? And he says, yes. And I go, do you really? He says, well, guys, by the way, this literally just happened today. Okay. So the student says, uh, you know, well, why? Why are you asking me this? I said, yes. And now you're telling me I shouldn't be. Why are you asking me and being really intentional? I said, because it's not going to be 20000 It's going to be closer to $55,000. And here's why. This is the part of generating leads and knowing what the heck you're going to end up doing with the property. Generating leads should be contingent upon what your exit strategy is. What are you trying to accomplish? Okay. So what ends up happening is the seller has a tenant that's living in the property. As we already discussed, this tenant is not paying their bills. So when my student closes escrow on this deal, guess what they have to deal with? They have to deal with this tenant and they have to do this thing called an eviction. And not only will they have an eviction, while they're doing the eviction, let's say we close in February, they will also have a payment to the seller for the seller finance deal. So February, March, $2,000. And during this time frame, they're doing an eviction, which will probably cost another $4,000. They've got a total cost to get that tenant out of the property of another $8,000, okay? Now, we they, they get the tenant out right here on this line. And now we've got April. Guess what? Now he owns the property in April. I mean, he's owned the property since February here, but now he has a, a, an empty property. He has a property that is empty and he can now renovate the property. I go, okay, so here's the thing, student. If you have to evict a tenant who's not paying the, the payments, they obviously don't respect their agreement with you whatsoever. So if they don't respect the agreement with you whatsoever, then don't you think they're probably going to damage the property? If they're going to damage the property, then don't you believe you're going to have to repair the property for the first month of you actually having a vacant property? He says, yeah, I didn't think about that. I go, yep, there you go. So here's what ends up happening. He has April plus another $15,000 in renovations, assuming that it's not horrible. And he has to go back and just renovate. So he's got all of April he's renovating. So it's that property's dead. It can't do anything for him. Now May, he's spending the whole month marketing to get a tenant. And April 1st, he gets a tenant, assuming everything's great. And he breaks even finally in April. So you've got two, let's add this up. 2,000, 2,000, 15,000, 2,000, 2,000, 4,000 dollars in cost, keeping that property going up. And taking care of that property. So you've got what, 19,000, 20, ooh, $27,000. Another $27,000 on top of the $20,000 it cost you to buy the deal. 
So minimum, okay, minimum, this is going to cost, this is going to cost us $47,000 to buy this property and get it operational. Okay, so you don't look at this deal and say, I want to start buying properties. Now, there's a couple of solutions to this. Solution number one. Solution number one is we say, all right, we are going to wholesale this deal. That's easier because now he can just make $10,000 wholesaling it to somebody like me and not have to deal with dealing with the $47,000. Okay, another solution would be, why doesn't he go get a private money lender? Okay, he could do a private money lender for the $47,000. Now he's got an interest payment and that interest payment killed the cash flow on the deal. So I said, well, why don't we do PMP? So bring in a partner for the 47,000 and let them take half of the deal and half of the ownership for bringing the $47,000 to the table. And now they don't have a hard money payment that you're making every single month. So there are three options here that you can go that route, even if you don't have your own money. The problem is these require skills of networking right here that a lot of people just don't take seriously until they absolutely need it. People don't raise money until they absolutely need it the second they need it. Okay. So I said, do you really want to buy this property? So here we are, people are out there generating leads, generating opportunities for themselves, and they don't understand exactly what they want to do. So if you don't want to be somebody who is sitting around buying properties, then you probably need to generate a lot more leads. If you're somebody who says, no, I'm ready. I can raise capital. I can bring money to the table and I can, be, I can go and buy these and hold these in my portfolio. Okay. Um, uh, by the way, Kaja Jaka says, Aloha Pace, would you invest in Hawaii market in the future? I own a Hawaii property on the beach, 2% interest rate, a VA loan. I do own in Hawaii. It's a great property, it has a main house and a guest house, and it's currently rented out. So yes, I do own in, in Hawaii. It's great. Okay, so see, Chris says, yeah, four this year is my goal, 10 more to go for my long-term goal. What I would do if I was Chris is I would look at lead generation. I would never do the traditional lead generation that you guys would you know, look at, okay? I would look at, I'm going to generate leads of sub two students that are out there looking for deals. So for example, I would look at Chris and I'd say, hey, Chris, you're out, you're out there looking for deals. Look at Chris on the main screen, Chris Jean-Baptiste. I'd say, I've done deals with Chris. Um, hold on a second. I got an interesting text. Ooh, wow. Sorry, I got a, I got a really good deal that just popped up. I had to say yes to. So sorry about that. So, um, If you are just trying to buy property, then the way you're generating leads is completely different. And the reason why I went in this long 26 minute tangent is to prove that to you guys. So many people are out there door knocking, cold calling, generating leads. And I go, what do you want to do? And they go, I just want to buy property. I'm like, well, then why are you doing that? Like, why not just buy deals from other people that are locked up? Okay. If you're a fix and flipper and you don't have time, I can just simply uh, surrealization says, are we answering sub two questions? Yeah, if you got a question, please ask the question in the side chat. Happy to answer. Okay. So I look at it and I go, do we, need, okay, this is a good question. Do we need an LLC for wholesaling? Yes. You should have a wholesale. Yes, guys, if you need it, if go get an LLC, go to start with prime.com. That's where I get all my LLCs. If you are doing any sort of business, if you are taking yourself seriously, then you should have an LLC. Um, if you're out there going and trying to buy a property and the seller says, yeah, what's the name of your company? You go, uh, Pace Morby. Do you think the seller is going to take you seriously? Do you think the agent's going to take you seriously? The answer is no, they are not going to take you seriously. Okay. Yes. You need an LLC. Um, Ooh, good one. Gator on IG says, if you brought in a PMT for the entry fee and decide to wrap it, how do you split the down payment monthly payments 50, 50, or they get uh, their money back first? That's a good question. I think that you've got to just, I don't think, I know you, you have to have the conversation with the private money partner. What are your individual objectives? This is a challenge in real estate is because there's so many individual answers because there's individual people, right? You're talking to one PMP over another PMP. They're going to have a completely different objective, timeline, 
goal, everything's going to be completely different. So you have to have that conversation and learn that skill of negotiating with them. Uh, Nalini Kalari says, how do I reach sub two students? Very simple. A lot of them are in the side chat right now. Just say, hey, I'm looking for a sub two student. Or here's another really great way to go find sub two students. I'll show you. Very simple. Check out my screen. I go to Google and I go to um, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash creative finance with Pace Morby. Boom. I'm going to go in here. And you are going to see there's 130,000 members, about 20,000 of these people are my students and they are trained. They want to help you. They want to do deals with you. That link I will put in the show right now. And that is a free Facebook group that you can go over to and people will help you. I'll give you the link right now in the side chat. There you go. Oh, happy birthday to Dom, Angie Milanazzo. It's Dom's birthday. Love us some Dom. Absolutely love that. So Barkat says, Barkat Jelani, I'm looking for a sub two student. I just gave you the link to the free Facebook group. You can find them in there or you can see them in the side chats of this show. Okay, there you go. Um, Ishmael says, hey, everyone, I'm a Gator looking to make some more connections. Love that. So guys, here's what I would be doing. It's really hard to be on YouTube and just say, hey, guys, I want to connect, right? Um, maybe say, hey, guys, I want to connect and give your email address or, Hey guys, I want to connect. Here's my phone number. Hey guys, I want to connect. Here's my website. Give people a way to communicate. Okay. Ben says, are there differences between or when starting the LLC, if we want to use it for flipping wholesaling or just holding assets? Um, here's what I would do. Anybody that goes to start with prime.com start with prime will give you guys a 30 minute strategy session on exactly how to set up your LLC the right way for free. They will talk to you for 30 minutes for free. For the sub two community and the Gator community, they will give you an hour for free and they will go through all your objectives one-on-one, -on -one, no cost, just strategy session. How do we set up your LLC? What kind of LLC should we set up? What, what state? Do you want privacy? Do you not want privacy? All of those things can be brought up in a conversation for free with start with prime dot com okay pretty simple um i started one llc for initial thought of holding properties in there can i use the fix and flip for flipping and construction work yes but you what you're doing is you're now mixing two different business types into one llc do you really want to be doing that okay oscar says are you still using sms to market yes i actually had a really great conversation with some of my top students they are using sms um we primarily use cold callers from a company called startvirtual.com let, let's jump into that. Let's talk, let's talk about lead generation. That's actually the topic of the show. So let's talk about that tonight. And I'll go over to the big whiteboard. And I'll get away from the um, screen. I'll get away from looking at the comments for a second so I can focus on this. And we can jump into some uh, in-depth conversation about lead generation. Okay. All right. So there are so many different ways to generate leads, as we already all know. Let's do clear, clear the content. Lead generation, okay? You've got three ty different types. You got three different umbrellas, so to speak, okay? You've got paid. You've got effort. And you've got referrals. A lot of people in the sub two community, here's what they do. They join sub two. So that other students inside of sub two who are actually using paid to get contracts, paid would be cold callers. Okay, we use a company called Start Virtual. If you wanna go spend money on um, hiring cold callers, that's the company we use. They also do our SMS texting for us as well. So if you wanna generate leads to do wholesale, fix and flip, buy and hold, I have a lot of students that go get these contracts through paid marketing channels. Then these students buy those deals from them, or they might even wholesale those deals. So they go, let's say this is Eric. Actually, this is a real story. Eric finds this student named Landon. Landon got this deal from cold callers. 
here's the contract, sells the deal to Eric for an extra uh, $10,000. And then Eric sells that deal to me for an extra $5,000. So Eric makes, or Landon makes the 10 and Eric's ma Eric makes the five. Did Eric actually have to cold call? Did Eric actually have to work out following up with sellers and negotiating and all that kind of stuff? Or did he just simply go to Landon and say, hey, Landon, next time you get a contract, please let me know because I have a buyer. Now, Landon had no idea it was me, right? But that's the point of referral-based business, right? That's the point of referral-based business. So we can go and very simply do the deals this way. It's very simple, very simple, okay? Um, Tamisha says, hey, Pace, it's time for me to renew my LLC that has an anonymity. If I do the renewal, will my name show up? Can I make an agent to sign on my on my behalf? Okay, Tamisha, um, we actually had a post in the Sub2 community um, a couple of days ago by ZZ, and ZZ said the same thing. She's like, Pace told us to just use Prime. I didn't use Prime, and now my name's all over it. I renewed my LLC. I did not do it right. So guys, please, if you're using doing an LLC, just go to startwithprime.com, have them do your renewals, have them do all your corporate stuff. Don't mess around with it. I don't know why you guys want to, you know, change your own tires, change your own oil, remove your own cavities, all paint your own house. Like, I don't know why you want to do that. Your time is more efficient when you're going out and generating leads. So just have the professionals do it. That's the answer. Startwithprime.com. Just go to start with Prime. They'll, they'll take care of all of it. Okay. Uh, Tamisha says, I use Prime. So if you use Prime, then why would you, here's a question, Tamisha, why wouldn't you just have them renew it for you the same way that they did in the first place? That's what ZZ did. ZZ's like, oh, I don't want to pay them to do it. It's like, whatever, 40 bucks or something like that. There you go. Um, this is funny. Uh, Jeffrey says, I thought I'd save money and I di and didn't listen and changed fast to Prime. Thank goodness. There you go. Angie says, can you sing happy birthday to Dom? No, but I'll say happy birthday to Dom. I love that man. He's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Okay. Great guy. One of my favorites, actually. I love that guy. Okay. So that's easy. If you guys are sitting here going, I don't have time to call. I don't have time to generate leads. I don't have time to go put forth effort. Then could you not just join a community of people that are doing deals and just get referrals? Like, Think about this. There's three ways to get deals. You're either paying for leads. You're either going out and networking. Like, um, what's a what's a great way to network? A great way to network is being calling agents, right? Working with agents is effort. You are doing things on your own accord, right? So let's talk about that. Paid. Very simple. You are you can go out and spend money on lists. Then you get a list. So what's a good list? A good list is foreclosure, probate, expired listings, okay, long days on market, FISBOs, FURBOs, and this list goes on and on and on and on. I could just keep going on and on and on. Could be tired landlords. They even have a they even have a list called um, feline list. So it's like people that have too many cats. Yes, truly, there is a list. Okay, uh, spend money on lists. So you spend the money to get probate leads or foreclosure leads. But then you have to do something like cold call. You have to text like SMS. You have to send direct mail right? Get them to call you. So we would call this marketing. I'm spending money on a cold caller. I use cold, uh, startvirtual.com. I spending money on SMS. I'm using uh, startvirtual.com. I use direct mail. Maybe that's like yellow letters HQ. I don't use them anymore, but I used to. Direct mail is very expensive. So it costs like $5,000 for every contract that you get. Uh, same thing with PPC, pay-per-click. Pay per lead. Difference between pay per click and pay per lead is that pay per click is that people are calling me. Uh, pay per lead is a company goes and generates leads from sellers and then they just give the lead to you and then you call the seller after the lead comes in. Okay. And then this goes on and on and on and on. Like you can do TV, radio, you can do billboards. I did billboards for two and a half years. You can do Facebook ads. 
this goes on and on and on. There's so many different ways to spend money on paid marketing. Now, if you're sitting here saying, Pace, I don't have money. Cool. Typically, if you have no money, typically you do have something called time, right? And when you have time, then you can utilize your effort. And typically this is where people start door knocking because door knocking is free. Also, people work with direct to agents. So they'll call agents directly. They'll develop relationships with agents. This is probably one of the more popular free ways of getting a, a deal done. And they will also, if they're door knocking, they typically will cold call the same people. And that is big time like foreclosure, Terry, right? So you still have to spend a little bit of money on the lead, but you don't have to spend money on the marketing channel. Same thing here. If you cold call yourself, that's the big difference here. If you're cold calling yourself, which guys, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm very rarely cold calling myself unless I'm calling on a business or I'm calling on expired listings. I don't like cold calling. I don't know about you, but I don't want to cold call. I don't know anybody that cold calls long term. I know, I just don't see it happen. Some people say I cold call, and I go, okay. Uh, Maj says, did you already give away the car to Larry? Yes, we did that on wholesale hotline. Maj, we gave that away on wholesale hotline. Okay. Um, I couldn't believe I couldn't believe the amount Gino was paying for PPC. Got to spend money to make money. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Here's the difference, Anthony. At some point, you guys end up generating a team. Okay. This is this is I think the biggest problem that most people have in this business is that when you come in here and you're listening to Gino, okay, here's Gino, awesome guy. Gino's got a team of like, you know, six cold callers. He's got a team of probably three to four acquisition people. So when those cold callers generate a lead, then these acquisition people handle that lead. He's probably got one to two lead managers. He's got, I know his, his fiance, she's amazing, is his TC, his transaction coordinator, person who's actually handling the transactions. And then he probably has one to two people in disposition. So people that are actually selling the deals. And then I would imagine that Gino probably has one to two people in admin and finance. This is the part that very few people actually break down for you when they're talking about their business. And so when you're brand new and you hear somebody breaking down their wholesale business and they're saying, oh yeah, we did 400 deals last year. Guys, this is why they have to go out and generate so many leads and he has to spend so much money because he's built a machine that requires a lot of leads for these three to four acquisition managers. There are so many things that Gino has, has had to learn in terms of building this business, getting the right cold callers, hiring the right acquisition people. I remember Gino actually used to have a partner. That partner is no longer with them. He's broken up with people. Like there's a lot that Gino has gotten to, to the point where Gino now primarily is a wholesaler. Okay. Not everybody wants this business. I can tell you when I first started in the business, this is what I wanted. I wanted this. I don't want this anymore. I don't want to be a wholesaler. I, I do wholesale from time to time, but I don't want to have a big wholesale business. I just don't like it. I don't like it. I don't want to do it anymore. Okay. See, Wesley Pipe says Gino is spending $5,700 per deal. Okay. So that's a challenge for a lot of you guys. You guys got to stay out of this. You don't want to be this person. So now can you be a much smaller wholesaler? Yes. Yes. You can absolutely be a much smaller wholesaler. That is where listening to and, and paying attention to smaller people. For me, when I first was in the business, it was me and my wife. This is my entire team. Okay. Pace and Laura. Pace, however, was spending $20,000 a month in marketing. I was doing billboards. I was doing direct mail, right? So mailers and uh, postcards. And I was also doing Facebook ads. I was doing a little bit of radio and a little bit of TV. In fact, I've been on the news like so many times here locally being like, hi, my name is Pace Morby and I'm a 
I'm a home investors. We buy ugly houses person, blah, 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 blah. I should actually post that on YouTube and show people how stupid I used to look. So I used to do this and spend $20,000. What I would get out of that is I would get typically two to four contracts per month. Out of those contracts, two of them were cash. I was selling them and making about $40,000 wholesale. And then two of those were creative. And I was typically selling one for $15,000. And then I was doing one where I was keeping as a rental and I would put that in my portfolio, okay? Out of that, okay, I'd make $40,000 here, but I freaking just paid $20,000 in marketing cost. This is also a business I, would, I didn't wanna be in. I felt like I was constantly chasing expensive leads and it was hard to scale. So, most wholesalers or most people that are finding deals, what their business looks like is this. They have themselves and they will have a cold caller. That's a VA. And that is, again, we use a company called startvirtual.com and they generate leads to them and they do their own deals and they do one to two deals per month. And they generate 15, let's say they generate 10 to $30,000 a month in income. And that's truly what most, I'd say, 80% of wholesalers are doing. And you look at that and you go, that doesn't seem appealing. Well, this is where the wholesalers will now come in and go, okay, I don't want to be this person anymore. I need to add skills to my, to my um, repertoire. I need to become better. I need to be a badass. And they get a little bit better at hiring more people. And then they can do more deals. They can double down on the amount of deals. And they go, okay. Now I have two cold callers, not one. Now I'm doing two to four deals a month with roughly the same amount of money. And now I'm taking home 40 to $50,000 a month. But again, now they're doing, this person doing a lot more work because now there's two cold callers and they go, oh my gosh, I need to hire a dispo person. And then what happens is very quickly, they become this. And so if that's not what you want to be, you got to know what the end looks like. You got it. Yes, this is all gross profit, Anthony Johnson. All gross profit. Okay. All gross profit. So you have to take into consideration what do you actually want at the end of the day? Most of you, most of you guys don't know exactly what you want. Okay. I will tell you smart people. Okay. Really, really smart people that are like, I don't have a lot of time. Here's what they do. Really simple. Let's say you have a sub two student. Gino, by the way, Gino is a sub two student. He's been a sub two student for almost three years. He's awesome. We love him. Let's say Gino is doing um, 10 to 15 contracts per month. If I'm another sub two student, I just go to Gino and I say, hey, Gino, can I help you sell one to two deals a month? And then I go find another sub two student that I know is buying and putting stuff in their portfolio. And I just sell one or two deals a month. Sub two, seller finance. The problem with that is a lot of sub two students don't know that Gino is a sub two student because three years ago he scaled his business and he doesn't come into the Zooms on a daily basis. And so you have to go th through the student registry and you have to go through and go, hey, how it looks like you've been a student for three years. I want to network with you. What do you have? What deals do you have? And actually build that relationship. You could build an entire business where you're making ten to forty thousand dollars a month just doing that. Okay, now very simple. You're not the one negotiating. Now Gino is the one that has the machine and going out and generating the leads. You don't have to be the one that does that. It's very simple. Okay. Now the other thing that I see a lot of people do is they just stay themselves, and it's really hard to get out of this phase. So I'll give you a good example. Andrew McGuire, newer student in sub two, he's an agent. Andrew does cold calling himself. We did this, in, we all you stu, sub two students, we just did a big expired listings training, me and Andrew in the last couple of weeks, we've done two of them. Um, Andrew cold calls every morning from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then in the afternoon, he's calling like three o'clock to 4 p.m. And all he's doing is calling 40 people that, per day. That's it, 40 people per day, because that's all that there are on the expired listings um, leads every day. And last month he made 61,000 bucks. 
how did he make the $61,000? Well, he calls the expired listings, the people who call the people who fired their agents and he gets them under contract, all sub two or seller finance. I actually bought one of the deals from him last month and he, out of that 20, out of that 61,000, he made 21,000 for me. And I bought that deal from Andrew. So if you, if you are a buyer right on the end, let me ask you a question. If you're actually trying to buy deals, why would you ever go do this? If you're just trying to be a buyer, why would you ever go do that? Why not just go find the Andrews? Why not just go into a community of people that are actually doing deals and just say, hey, I want to buy deals from you. Done. You don't need to have these conversations with yourself. You don't need to break things down. Okay. It's crazy to me. It's crazy to me that people will go, I'm a buyer. How do I generate leads? You don't. You have all these people, Andrew, that are like, where do I find the buyers? Guys, you already need each other. You don't need to go out and generate leads. You don't need to generate leads. If you are a buyer, you don't need to generate leads. If you're trying to build a portfolio, you don't need to generate leads. Get that out of your head. Stop with this whole, I need to generate leads thing. Go work with the people who are doing the deals. If, they're, if you're working with the people that are doing the deals, you won't have to generate the leads. That's it. They generate the leads. They work with the expired listings. They do the contracts. They do all the things. It's very simple. Now, you also could very simply go, all right, I know Pace is a buyer. Pace is a buyer. I want to do deals with Pace. In fact, there's a lot of people in the side comments tonight that have done deals with me. So thank you guys. Appreciate you. I could just go, all right, I know that Pace is a buyer. This is you. I would go, what the heck is Pace buying? What does Pace want? Right? This is what we call bird dogging. You go, Pace, what are you trying to retrieve? I'll be, I'll be your golden retriever. I will go and retrieve the gold for you. I will, in fact, let's just make me gold. I'm the golden retriever. What gold are you looking for? Meaning, are you looking for three bed, two baths? Are you looking for sub two deals? Are you looking for seller finance deals? Where, where are you looking? Okay, you, you want Arizona. Okay, great, easy. I'm gonna go find all the sub two students in Arizona. You want sub two and seller finance deals in Arizona. Okay, great, no problem. You want single family homes. Okay, great, easy. I get a list of what you're looking for. And then I start networking inside the community and saying, hey guys, I have a buyer. This is what you do. You say, I have a buyer for these things. And you network. And the students that are the Genos, the students that are, you know, the Chris John Baptiste, the ones that are out there looking for the deals, the Landon Moores and the Angie and Don Milanazos, like all these people that are out there looking for deals, all you have to do is go find them and say, hey, I have a buyer. Bring me all your deals. Everything that is this buy box, everything that's in here, I have a buyer for this. You find this buyer a deal once a month. This is how Kevin Cho made money this last year in 2023. Kevin Cho sold me, I think, 30 plus deals. His average deal was like 10K with me. He made $300,000 just doing a deal with me every other week, right? Or maybe a little bit less than every other week. Um, so Kevin, that's it. He's like, what do you want? And he just went out and found it. Went to other students and found it. He was doing most of his deals were coming from other students. So a lot of times you guys are sitting there going, I want to generate leads when you really don't have to. You could just do what we call bird dogging where Somebody else has found the deal. Somebody else has gotten the contract. Somebody else has done all the, all the work. And you bring, the, you bring the value to them by bringing the buyer. And so, again, I did $100 million in purchases last year with the Sub2 community. And a lot of them came from students that came to me and go, um, what happened to getting Kevin a wife? That he's too busy making money. Okay, too big, busy making money. So Joel's like, I have that leverage. Great. That's it. Well, let's, let's connect. Guys, this is simple. Dang, uh, dang, didn't know Pace is live. Yeah, Donna Bell, good to see you. Good to see you, good to see you. Callus Bell. Uh, Selena, Pace, do you buy houses in California? We own just a couple um, in Sacramento. I don't buy properties in California as a habit. I only do buy properties in California if I'm partnering with another student in California. Then I will. Okay. 
Uh, I'm looking for sub two students nationwide. Christina, here's a here's a big challenge. My sub two students will typically work with themselves. They're not trying to work outside of my community as much as they're trying to work inside the community because it's a vetted community. But you can look for them. But here's what they're going to do. I'm going to tell you what a sub two student's going to do to you, for you, et cetera. Watch this. You're sitting here saying, connect with me. I, I, want, to, I want to be the middleman. They're not going to let you do that. I'm sorry. My, my sub two students are going to put you to work. Okay. They're, they're, going to, they're going to put you to work. And here's what I mean by that. You guys are sitting here going, all right, I'll paste just laid the, lay it down for me. I'm going to find a sub two student that's out there finding deals, a deal finder, right? Somebody actually is going out and getting contracts. And me, the person who's a non-student, I'm going to go get their deals and then I'm going to send them to another sub two student. Guys, I'm sorry. This does not ever happen. The sub two community is a click, very tight community. They, if they're like, oh, you're a sub two student? No, uh, you're not? Okay, here's what, here's what they're going to do to you. They're going to go, oh, that's nice. You're trying to do that. Okay, got it. So how about this? Come and work for me. Work underneath me and I will give you leads and I will let you call my leads. I will let you follow up on my leads and I will let you bring value to me by putting in the work. They will not allow you into the middleman position because you're not in our community and it's going to be hard for them to go, well, why wouldn't I just do that for another sub two student? Okay, so if you are looking for sub two students, Christina, just so you know, the majority of them are going to just put you to work, okay? They're going to put you to work. They're going to make you do all the work, okay? Uh, and same thing, Ron Natal says, same thing for Gators. They're very much a clique, a tribe. And so if you are saying, I want to work with sub two students, this is what's going to happen for you. You are going to be working for them which I think is a, is a superpower because you don't have to generate the leads. Somebody's going to give you great feedback on your calls and they're going to teach you how to do follow-up and you'll get into the business very, very quickly. So if you are looking for sub two students, I would be very specific of what you are looking for. Okay. There you go. Oliver says, I rarely accept Facebook friend requests outside of sub two since I joined no offense. Okay. There you go. Donabelle, we know you are sub two. I, that's, I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about people saying, hey, I'm looking for sub two students. Perfect. Here's what you do. Okay. King King says, I want to work for a sub two student. Lack of knowledge is the fall of all men. Perfect. This is exactly what I'm trying to say is that if you are going to work for a, look for a sub two student, that's what you should be doing. Uh, Facebook, you guys don't ever do this. Okay. Like Facebook user, I don't even know your name. And you say, Pace, please help. With what? That's like somebody texting you going, we need to talk. About what? Like, why not just say, hey, B Pace, we need to talk about the sandwich that I want you to order for me tomorrow. Like, why not just say, Pace, please help me with blah, blah, blah. Come on, guys. You guys got to do better than that. You got to do better than that. You need help? Say, I need help with blank. Okay? Uh, great. I can do Katie, Texas. What's your criteria? Perfect. I love this. Pace, do you buy in Michigan? Everybody in here, I will not do a deal with a non-sub two student. So it doesn't matter where I buy. If you are trying to do a deal with me, I will only do deals with sub two students. So please work with the sub two students on this. Have agents said, I have agents said, I don't want to let you assign sub two or seller finance. Um, yeah, I'm sure that's happened. Um, but, you know, for every time somebody said something, there's somebody that has overcome it. And the, and the big reason is because they actually have learned the skill of being up. Um, they've learned the skill of being having upfront conversations and upfront contracts with people, okay? And they overcome these objections by learning the skills and practicing, all right? Pace, I'm ready. Uh, da, 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 okay. Da, 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 da. Do you have, okay, Robin Hurt, perfect, perfect, perfect. There we go. I love this. Rob Hasty says, Pace's free Facebook group is where you need to be if you're not in sub two. Yes. And I already showed you guys how to get in there at the beginning of the show. Creative Finance with Pace Morby is the name of the Facebook group. Okay. You can go in there and become a free Facebook group member. It is not our community. It is just a Facebook group that you guys can get some help and some resources and find students in there that will hire you for their team to go out and generate the leads. Now, tonight, 
what I promised is I promised I was going to give away an iPhone. So let's give away an iPhone tonight. What do you, what do we say? Hmm. All right, let's do let's do a, 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 a who needs an iPhone? Don't tell if you have an Android, tell me you have an Android. We're going to get we're going to fix that. Do not tell me if you have a brand new iPhone, I don't want to be giving you an iPhone. Tell me type in the word iPhone if you need an iPhone in the side chat. Okay, I do. Android here. Oh, Josh Smith. Reynolds. Okay, Cameron. I have an Android. I have an Android. Okay, cool. Wow, y'all, we got a lot more. We got a lot more Android users on here. Tisha Harris. You know what, Tisha Harris? You're the one. You won, you won the iPhone for the night. Here's what I want you to do, Tisha. Send an email to jade at pacemorby.com. I'm going to say that again, and I'm going to put it on the screen so I don't have to say it 100 times. Jade at pacemorby.com and tell her that you won an iPhone from Pace tonight. Congratulations. Proud of you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and guys, next week we have a student that's coming in here. We're going to break down their schedule, time blocking. We're going to break this all down. I'm trying to keep most of these F, um, episodes under an hour because it already is really, really late at night. So Next week, put it on your calendar. We will be talking about time blocking and how to put the business together in very limited time frame. Exactly what you should be doing. And I'll be breaking down somebody else so I can have very specific conversations. We will be doing that next week. Guys, I appreciate you. We did the episode in less than one hour. I'll see you guys next week.